Hey guys, Michael here. So I'm back again with another video in this M1 series. Uh, today I'm going to show you a couple of things I'm engraving on, including metal. Uh, I'm going to try out the rotary tool. I also bought an accessory or a material from Xtool's website. I'm going to show you what that looks like and kind of what the end result looks like. And then also I found something on Amazon that's pretty helpful to me in my shop when it comes to the M1. Stick around. Let's get to it. Okay, so before we get started with the engraving, let me show you something I found on Amazon that actually helps me. So I'm in my, you know, garage, wood shop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I get dust on my M1 and I want to protect that. So what I found was a blanket uh, cover on Amazon. So check this out. This is just a blanket cover you can find uh, anywhere. Uh, but this one in particular opens from the top and it actually fits the M1 perfectly. So I don't even have to modify this at all. I just unzip it, leave it unzipped, and I can take this cover and flip it over the M1, and it fits it like a glove. It has a little bit of play on it. It's just right, and it keeps the dust off the M1. I'll put a link to this in the description down below if you're interested. I make no commission off of that. I'm just something I found on Amazon. I think uh, some of you guys will actually find helpful. So I'll put a link down there and below on that. And let me share with you one other thing that I did on the M1. So the M1 has that base that's removable. Well, I got tired of removing the base because to remove the base, you have to lean it, put your hand underneath, pick the metal up, and um, it's just kind of cumbersome to do that. Let me zoom in and show you what I came up with. All right, so here we're looking at the base. I've already pulled it out of the M1. These holes you see are actually air intake holes. When the fan, the exhaust fan is going, the air comes up over those, through those holes and out the back. So you don't want to cover up those holes. But I needed a way to lift this up. because Again, I'm tired of lifting up underneath there to lift it up. So I came up with two ideas. The first idea I came up with was this guy right here. It was a little kind of a metal hook, almost like a, a wire hanger. And I came up with this and just kind of sticking it underneath and hooking it like that. Well, that works, that works great. But what I didn't like about this is it's actually loose. I can lose it. Um, I'm just not sure what to do with it, where do I put it? Plus it's actually kind of scratching up my pretty metal and I didn't want to mess it up just yet. Um, so let me share with you my next approach. So this is a piece of Velcro. It's about three inch wide and you can double up over itself and actually sticks to itself. So, what does this have to do with this? Well, let me show you. This is five inches wide. Cut it in half. And you see the width of that slot? I want to make this the width of that slot, but not all the way up. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut it and angle it outwards. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Cut it, angle it outwards. So now, for lack of a better term, it looks like a bikini. <laughs> so it's skinny on the middle, uh, down the, at the bottom, and fat at the top here. And this is what it looks like. So I can take this and thread it through here, and it makes a loop. So I'm going to thread it through one side, and also thread it through the other side. Like, and I can take this, loop it over, and stick it to itself. And so once you loop that through, you now have a little grab with your finger to lift it up and down. And it's out of the way. It's not getting in the way of where you're going to put your material, which is that white line is the, uh, the maximum you can put that material. It doesn't block the holes. Um, so you're still getting plenty of airflow. And this is just a nice little convenient way to lift the base out of the M1 without grabbing underneath it. All right, so here we are at the M1. I'm going to go ahead and do the bamboo pieces first, and then I'll come back with the metal pieces after that. So I'm putting the bamboo in there. I'm making sure to put at least one, one bamboo piece underneath the laser because it's going to use that to measure the thickness of that material. Let's close the lid and head on over to the XCS software. All right, here we are on the XCS software. It's already taken a picture of the bamboo pieces. I'm going to zoom in by holding down control and scrolling with my mouse wheel. There's my bamboo. So let's go ahead and insert some text. Click text and click on the screen. And I'm 
going to type what I want it to say. So one of them is going to be mint, M-I-N-T. I don't like that font. Let's choose a different font. On the latest version of XCS or Xtool Creative Space, they have uh, the ability now to see all of your system fonts. So any font you have installed on your computer, whether you download from a website or just comes with Windows, it's now available in the XCS software. So that's really cool. So I'm going to pick uh, a font that I like. I'm just going to pick on, let's pick on this one. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So it's selected, but first, if you notice, it's set to score. Let me change it to engrave. All right. Now let me adjust the size of this so it actually fits a little bit better. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to paste it. So that way I keep the same size. I'm going to come up here and change the word to, let's do basil. And click out of the way. And let me move this over a little bit to the left. So I'm going to grab the hand. That way when I click on the text, this uh, window that pops up is not in the way. So I want to adjust this a little bit more. Okay, they're still working on some of the features on, on Xtool software. So I want to center this, but I can't quite nudge it using the mouse. But what I can do is use my arrow keys and push it up and down, left and right. But I can also adjust the position by typing in numbers up here and fine tuning it. So I can take that out and put a six um, or, you know, six, zero, seven, whatever you want, you can fine tune it there. I'm just going to use my arrow keys and get it pretty close. All right, I think that looks good. Make this a little bit higher. I think that looks good. So select these, engrave. Now, according to my little chart here, it's supposed to be 80% power, 100 millimeters per second. So right now I'm in inches, so I need to flip it to millimeters. So go to settings, millimeters. So I'm set to engrave. I want it 80% power. So I can type 80 or I can use a slider. And the millimeter per second is 100. So I can, again, I can use my slider or I can just type it in. There we go. So these are ready to go. If you wanted to do them different than each other, you just click them on individually and adjust the power individually. But I wanted them done together, so I highlighted them like that. So last thing I need to do is set the thickness material. So I'm going to come over here and auto measure the thickness. And that will set the focus of that laser. All right. So if you notice, these actually moved a little bit. So let me adjust these. That's a little bug in the software. So what I should have done is uh, auto measured first and then came back and moved them in the right location. But since I moved them, then auto measured, I'm having to move them again. All right, those look good. We're at three millimeters, which is the thickness of that uh, bamboo. These are set at 80, 100, one pass. I can check both of them. Yep, they're set to engrave. Once everything's set up, I can hit start. It's going to show me what it's going to do. And I can hit send. All right, so next I'm going to move on to the dog tags. This one actually came with the M1, and this one came with the premium material package. Some additional ones of these actually came with the material package as well. Put these in there. Again, underneath the laser so I can use that as a measuring device. So let's head on over. Before I do my text, I'm going ahead and auto measure the thickness. Okay, so this is a 2.5. Now, I'm not sure if I need to do the auto measure if I'm going to use a user-defined material. 
let's see what happens. So I know this is the stainless steel dog tag, so let me drop that down and pick stainless steel dog tag. So it actually readjusted my measurement. So it looks like it did not have to do that. So by default, sitting on the base plate of this, it actually picks it as 1.7 millimeters thick. Let me add what I want to add on these. So on this dog tag on the right, I'm gonna add some texts. Our poodle's name is Divi, D-I-V-I. -I. And I'm gonna change the font. All right, so I pick my font and I set the size of this thing. Now on this one, I'm going to insert an image and see if I can put our logo on that. I'm not sure how well that will work. Let's try it. Let me zoom out so I can see it. Resize it. All right, so let me double check. An inserted image is always set to engrave, and the text is also set to engrave. The power and speed I cannot change because I'm using the stainless steel dog tag uh, predefined material. So let's hit start, see what happens. All right, it's finished. This is my first time engraving metal. I'm a little nervous. Let's see how it looks. This is hot off the press. Well, you can see that. That looks really good. So those came out really well. Last thing I want to show you real quick is how to do the rotary tool and engrave on a bottle such as this one. Um, before I do, I wanted to pause and just say thank you. I know I've told you this before in a couple other videos, but I'm just going to stop and say thanks a lot. I appreciate everybody joining and following along on this journey. If you haven't done so, take a minute, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Um, you'll get notified whenever I add new uh, videos. But more than that, it actually helps me quite a bit. It helps me grow the channel and just uh, improve the content because it kind of keeps me pumped and wanting to add more videos and just to show you guys actually what I'm doing here in the shop. So again, take a moment, hit subscribe, hit like, and appreciate it. All right, so let's get started with the uh, rotary tool. I have the rotary tool here, M1 here, bottle here. Let's move the camera in and let's see what we can do. So I have the rotary tool out and this is the package that comes with it. Inside the package, you have a couple of uh, screws in there some allen head screws you get the allen wrench and you get the cable for it all right so now i'm zoomed in let me show you how this actually rot rotary tool works when you want to size it to your material you have to move this bar in or out uh, at position one two or three to fit the diameter of this the way this one comes at number two it looks like this fits actually really well however if this were a bigger bottle I might want to move it out to number three. To do that, you would take your Allen head, and to do that, you would take your Allen wrench, you would loosen the screw that's on the bottom underneath this vertical piece. Once you loosen it, you'll pick this up, and you can pull this out just a little bit, and then you can slide it over to the next spot, and you push this back in, kind of lift this up a little bit, and push it back in where it falls where it's supposed to go and it's easier said than done there we go and this is just going to drop in that slot right there so once you get that dropped in there you'll take that allen head put it in here and tighten it back up but i'm going to put it back to number two so again lift this end up kind of pull this out just a little bit away from this part right here and you can slide it left and right once you find the spot push it back in that way and it drops right there. And I'm gonna put this Allen head back in. This is where I need it to go. All right, that's in place. I'm gonna put these back in the bag so I don't lose them. 
Now let's actually plug this in and plug it into the M1. So the first thing I gotta do is flip it around and see there's this little plug right here. That's where this end goes. And you just wanna gently push it in there. To attach this to your M1, you'll have this connector that actually plugs into the back. This has a little keyhole or a slot on the back, on the one side of it. Line that up with the keyhole in there, otherwise it won't fit. Push it in there gently, and you can tighten it up for security. When you take it off, make sure you don't pull from the cable. Loosen it, and you know, gently wiggle it out of there, like so. All right, so I have my rotary tool in here. I have the cable plugged into the back and coming underneath it. And I had the rotary tool in the middle. So the trick is to lift this whole unit up to where the engraving portion that was almost even with the base of this is at the top of your cylinder. So if I lay the cylinder on here, I have quite a bit of ways to go to lift this up to where it's even with this. This particular package comes with some riser blocks and you have the ability to rise it up this much or rise it up this much. However, I don't think that's gonna be enough even with those blocks. So what I'm gonna use is actually some pieces of two by four. People use tuna cans, just whatever you need to lift it up. It could even be school books, uh, just something to lift the unit up where it will auto adjust that focus for you. When you're doing this, it's kind of scary because it'll wanna slide on these blocks. So that's why you see people using tuna cans because the tuna cans will interlock on each other that makes it a lot more stable. All right, so looking at that, that is pretty good on the height. I'm gonna have to check that on the software. However, one thing I didn't think about was, let me see if I can scoot this out and show you. This cork sickle is actually not level. Let me lower this camera down so I can show you. The bottle I want to engrave is not level. This level sitting on the workbench shows that it's level which means the M1 is gonna be level. However, if I take this and put it on top of the bottle, you can see that it is not level. So what I'm gonna do is actually tilt this up by adding additional blocks underneath this side of the rotary tool until it becomes level. Let me see if this dowel is gonna be just enough. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to use some additional blocks of wood here. So with the dowel underneath on one side, that actually leveled out the bottle just right. So that means the laser is going to be level when it engraves on there. So I'm going to have to move this setup inside. All right, here's a bird's eye view. I have my level on there so I can just double check to make sure that uh, it's going to be level in there. Again, the cork sickle is actually flat, so I need to make sure it doesn't rotate too much. I think what I'm going to do is just put uh, my wife's name right here and kind of like the way, the way cork sickle is. And let's see how well that works. Now, I've never tried this in the software, so I'm going to put this in place, plug the M1 in. I'm making sure to put this in the center so that that laser is going to hit in the center and measure the height of this to make sure it will actually engrave uh, here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to adjust my heights uh, again on the riser blocks. However, I think I'm okay with that. So let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, so I had to step in here. I totally messed up the process when I did the rotary setup. Um, not the rotary setup itself, but the software side. I didn't do it right. My image wasn't big enough, so it didn't even really need to do the rotation of the cup while I was doing this. So long story short, I'm going to redo a video with just the rotary tool to show you how it's done and show you the software behind it. This is what it looked like when it's all said and done. It came out great. I was happy with it. However, again, the, the image was so small, it didn't need to rotate. Plus, I didn't set up the software properly. Well, there you have it. So I totally bombed the rotary tool demo in that video, and I think I lost some footage because my phone stopped recording. So I think we're gonna call it a night for right now. Uh, my microphone died, and I uh, just kind of failed on the, on the rotary tool demo. However, the bamboo stakes really look really good and the dog tags came out great. 
So my next video will be a rotary tool video. Um, it actually worked really well on here. However, the, the image was small enough where it didn't need to rotate and it didn't set up the software correctly. So I will do the other side of this. I'll do an actual, I'll probably do our logo on this and make it big enough where it does need to rotate and show you exactly what you need to do in the software. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.